Congratulations, gold medal. How's that feel? Uh, pretty crazy right now. Like, it's still not sunk in that I've come to world champs and I've come away as gold medalist and world champion. Especially, I think when you're in an event like that and there's a, a figure and an athlete who's so so dominated and such a heavy favourite that um, I never ever expected to be world champion. I believed that there was a, a chance, but my main thing was I wanted to come in here and make amends from a shocking run in Tokyo and just kind of like come away with a run that I was proud of and that was hopefully going to be a medal let alone like expecting for it to be a gold so it's a dream scenario for me. Tell us about that final burst. Uh, like there's so many possibilities for the how that race could have gone and all I wanted to do was stay in contention for as long as possible to be able to use my speed and be strong enough to be able to to be able to do that and to actually use the only card I had against Jacob which is a fast 800. Um, so like <laughs> When I got into the last lap, I was like, I feel good, I feel good. But I thought something was going to happen to change that. And then as soon as the 200 point came, I knew I had to get past him on the bend and just control that to then save up for a big home straight because you need it against someone as strong as him. Um, I haven't seen it back. I like In my head, it probably is different to how it actually went out. Um, but that was just like, for me, like the aligning of so many things, like so many years like, of hard work. I've been doing sports since I was eight years old, so I'm 20 years deep now. Um, I've tried to change so many things this past year. Well, not so many, but the stuff that I knew was wrong from last year to give myself a shot at being competitive in a race like that. So for that to have come off and for so many people to work so hard to get me to this point um, is something I feel proud of and I hope that they feel proud that they've done their part to get me to this place as well. It's almost like a sense of disbelief when you cross the, the finish yeah, line. All just, of that just came out, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, like even now, like, I can't, I can't believe it. Like still, still uh, it hasn't sunk in that this happened. Like, there could easily be a bronze here and like the fact that it's actually a gold is yeah like ridiculous it's um how many kids dream of being like olympic world champion and how many kids actually get the chance to do that and i was a little kid that wasn't amazing like i, I loved the sport and i believed that i at some point could do it and like the older you get the more you realize how hard it is to do that and even the last few years it's like well <clears throat> i feel i've got the potential to get a medal here um that's what i want to do i just want to finish my career global medalist, like either Olympic medal, uh, world medal, um, but like to be a world champion is, is just like madness. Why <laughs> Thank was you it, very much. Thanks, yeah. cheers. Thank you. Why was it important for you to get the lead at 200 and not to wait until the home straight? Uh, my races this year, like, and probably my races previously, like going back to when I won Oslo in 2017, like uh, that's just my strength is being able to control the bend because when I was younger, I used to be very excited when I kicked that and I'd go too hard at 300 at 200 and then I'd have nothing for the straight. But when you, when you hit the front in the bend, you can control it and people aren't likely to come past you. So then by the time you hit the home straight, you've kind of still got something rather than being all out around that bend. So yeah, my, car, my cards were literally last 200. If I'm there, I've got a good shot. Um, so I was like licking my lips with 200 to go that whatever happened I was going to have a good chance of beating him like whether, whether that happened or not I was going to be in the race that pushed him and I kept thinking he was going to come past it wasn't until I crossed that line that uh, yeah I just couldn't believe that that's actually what happened yeah your dad said right after Tokyo I think you had just one conversation basically saying you needed to change things up and get stronger to be able to run in these sort of 328 yeah. 329 races can yeah. you tell me when and where was that conversation what do you remember about that I was in the I was in the dining hall of the village and it was probably two hours after I'd raced um, I was a bit all over the place because like Tokyo was very very gutting for me um, I went into it feeling like I could get a medal and to finish 10th I felt I was just it wasn't even like I, I, at the time I thought 10th like 10th or 4th whatever happened like if I'm not a medalist it doesn't matter but 10th was just such a gutting place to finish when I felt as though I, I should have been at least like fourth, fifth, sixth because I wasn't good enough for a medal. So I just knew that I was probably like the or if one of the best 800 meter runners in the field. If we all ran a 5k, I was probably going to be last or near the back. So I knew that that was what I needed to change. <clears throat> there was no point in being so good at eights that if I'm never going to get the chance to use it. So I did a 10k, I did a cross race, um, which I didn't really want to do. And then those 3K indoors was like my, my big step to kind of push myself out of my comfort zone and do that strength-based stuff that I was lacking. Um, you see those guys like Josh, Jakob, Cherry, like all of them could run a good 5K, whereas I knew I couldn't. So 
there wasn't much to change. There was just a few gaps to fill. And a combination of that and then coming into the season and racing those quick races more because I think I, I didn't get the opportunity to run like that last year. So Oslo really opened my eyes as to um, how much work I probably needed to do because I was a long way off Oli and Jakob there. But the work I did between then becoming British champion and then the few weeks in Colorado Springs just to get a little bit more under my belt, I was confident that I was in a better place, but you never know where that's going to be still. I just, <clears throat> I knew through the rounds that I felt good. So I just hoped that I was in contention for a medal, like, let alone a win. What specifically did you do between <clears throat> Oslo and now then to get to close like that? Uh, I've had a torn tendon in my hamstring uh, after a bat. So one thing I needed to do was I could manage it, but every time I was doing track sessions, it was flaring up and um, we got that scanned after British Champs because between the rounds of British Champs when I had to change pace and after the final it was pretty bad so I had to manage that which that was a big thing was just I went to Colorado Springs and we did like the right sessions to be able to not make it worse but to make it better so like my thing is that I've, I've got good acceleration so in reps I go out hard but I had to be much more controlled um, going up to altitude getting a little a little boost of that um, and just mainly like doing the sessions I needed to do to run at 15 pace because I'd had a little bit of focus on eight stuff still. And I've got good training partners who have been pushing me in sessions and helping me out loads that it's just like a perfect storm of everything came together. And I can't fault like anything I've done the last month between Oslo and now to get me to this place. Like I just had to mainly get my head around the fact that I was in the best shape possible and kind of take the pressure off what I needed to do here, just relax and enjoy racing and hope that I can get the best out of myself and kind of display what I feel as though the potential I've shown in the sport through the years. So I just hoped it was a medal and um, yeah, so to get a gold is like something that I can obviously cherish for the rest of my life now. Yeah. Did you hear your dad at all during the race or after the race on the PA uh, system? After, like, I, I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't hear it much in it. Like, one of my mistakes in Oslo was I was too aware of what was going on behind and around me. So they had a big screen in Oslo at different points and I was checking it too much because I was feeling a bit rough. So I tried to just avoid the clock, avoid the screens in that race there and just run to feel and look, of, look forward rather than behind. So <laughs> I was always watching what Jakob was doing and, um, I'm glad there was no screen in that home straight because I wasn't aware where he was, but my sole focus was like a race horse with blinkers, just trying to get to that finish line as smooth as possible. But what does it feel like to hear your dad announcing that you're a world champion? I'm, I'm so used to hearing him that. I actually couldn't hear him much because I was just in my own head like in disbelief, but it's special to have him on the mic. So I hope he was like choked up and pretty emotional about it. And um, yeah, I've had a lot of rubbish races like Tokyo he was calling last year and he probably didn't even mention my name. So for him to call me as a world champion is a big change from that end. It's the dream, having a dad that announced in a stadium for him to call me through for something like this is ridiculous. Are you going to be able to convince him to celebrate tonight? Because I think he's already <laughs> saying we've got Com Games in 10 days from now. Yeah, for me, like, I'm trying to, like, make the most of this right now because you don't really get the momentum of, like, being able to enjoy the success when you've got another champs coming up. So tonight and tomorrow and maybe the next few days is very important. But Coms is going to be very hard to kind of get refocused again now. But hope I can use the momentum for what I've done here to go and, go and have a good one there but this is this is a big deal for me so and a big deal hopefully for him so he needs to really like make the most of this tonight I think. Yeah totally. Yeah. One question for me real quick how did it feel to you know that first hug to your mom right there at the end and have them in the stadium? Yeah like she was a wreck like she said she didn't see the last lap I don't think so it's special to be able to have her coming out here because it was so hard to get to Eugene and that's the perks of having a dad working here is that she can come and stay with him and yeah, like it's special. Like Tokyo, we had no friends and family, so to have her and to be able to see like other teammates and like other British fans uh, really made it much more of a special occasion for me. Thank you. Appreciate it.